This episode is sponsored by Rescue. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Resilience Pod, the podcast helping you become resilient in our world full of disruptions. You're here with me, your host, Rena Singh. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Today's episode is about remote worker resilience are you prepared? And I'm with my next guest who brings with him over 25 years executive experience in driving business growth and innovation. He is a founder and CEO of an award-winning patent innovation called Rescue. So to help us dig a bit deeper into the nitty gritties of remote worker resilience and working remotely, please join me in welcoming Andrew Lawton. Welcome, Andrew. Hello, Rena. Good to be here. Good. So, Andrew, a very interesting topic here because it's quite pertinent. You know, remote working is the thing now. And like, why do we need to have resilience? So many questions buzzing in my head. But before we get into some of the details for our audience and a bit of clarity, I wanted to get straight in there and ask you, what is remote worker resilience? Well, um, as you said, you know, we're all here working from home. You are, mm-hmm. I am, despite the, uh, despite the background. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, we've, we've been working from home uh, for two years. Mm-hmm. Uh, <clears throat> I, I, obviously, March 2020 was the big uh, line in the sand where everyone was forced home. And, and of course, at that point, um, I think all of our organisations realised that actually you can be complete, completely productive while in the home. Now, of course, you know, it, it is still great to see people face to face. And Mm -hmm. I think now we're sort of reaching that balance, that hybrid working, where people are going into the office for collaborative meetings and creativity, and then they're coming home and doing the actual work in the Mm. home office. Um, Nobody's actually going into work to do work. They're going into work to meet colleagues. And and so things have changed uh, dramatically um, um, because you know, we've, we're coming out of, fingers crossed, uh, the pandemic and yeah. um, things are returning to some level of normality. Um, uh, but what, what is clear is that hybrid working is here to stay. It is the way forward. Um, and uh, organisations are now realising that and uh, setting forward their, uh, their strategies for, for the infrastructure to support that remote work. Now, you know, most people um, can get away with you know, being offline and, mm. and uh, you know, running, you know, having power cuts, et cetera, from time to time, or maybe for, a, for, for a, a short period without too much disruption. Now they may you know, uh, find alternatives and, and have fallbacks, but there are actually quite a number of people, a number of uh, job roles and tasks that need resilience rather than mm. fallback. Um, uh, and those that can't be interrupted or those roles that are required for regulation or those roles that are central to decision making, for example, crisis management. Many of people yeah. will, will be involved in crisis management. You don't want to be caught up in the same uh, crisis as all the people you're trying to support. Um, and there's critical call centres, security operations centres, network operations centres, etc. So all of these things are now being run remotely from the home. And um, you know, to a certain extent, you can mitigate impact and risks, mm. but uh, ultimately, you know, those individuals will need uh, a level of resilience rather than fallback. Mm. And that's quite pertinent, isn't it? And guys, if you're watching or listening, you know this by now. We've experienced it firsthand. You know, we, we, we kind of get an idea. We really understand what remote worker resilience is. And Andrew, you've touched on this a little bit in, in your, you know, your first response about, you know, why we need to consider it. But I want to dig a little bit deeper and go into this because, you know, we're in this state uh, and we're, we're working remotely and doing things. The hybrid is here, uh, but there's still feel that some people feel oh well why do we need remote working resilience especially the resilience part of it like do we need to consider it because are we considering it because I don't think some of us are I think it's Mm. traditionally we wouldn't think about it so I want to get an understanding of like what your thoughts are and why we why do we need to actually take this seriously well I I think um uh, you know, resilient, resilience is different than fallback. And, mm. and uh, as I say, many people uh, are quite happy with fallback and most of the population. We're finding it's about 5 to 10% of people that actually need resilience rather than, yeah. uh, rather than uh, fallback. And those individuals, um, as I say, have roles that are pivotal for, the, for their companies. 
Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, they could be, as I said, uh, in decision making processes. They could be traders. Um, they're yeah. working from home. Um, and it's where there is a financial, significant financial, operational, uh, regulatory, or brand impact um, on the business as a result of not being present. And yeah. um, you know there are, as I say, a whole raft of roles. It, it tends to be, you say, five to seven, ten percent of um, uh, staff. And uh, you know here we are in the UK, um, and we think that power, for example, is very stable. Mm. Um, and and I, I think there's this uh, there's a ability to forget. Um, just earlier on this year, we had a number of storms roll through, um, and cause massive disruption to to our power networks. Our internet, uh, you know, goes down quite regularly as well. Mm. And actually, if you look at the stats, um, uh, Ofgem came out with a report looking at power, um, mm. and they've said actually forty one percent of home uh, home uh, users. Um, uh, were impacted by uh, by power outages over the past year. In fact, that increased, I think, to fifty six percent. If you happen to wow. be in Yorkshire, Yorkshire <laughs> uh, particularly badly hit, I think. Yeah. By, um, by Gosh. Storms. Um, and the same goes for um, the uh, the internet. I mean, I think yeah. used to which did a, a survey that showed that literally half uh, of the people working from home had some form of internet outage that mm. was disruptive, i.e. over three hours um, wow. during the one year. So that's you know, half get impacted by internet outages, half by power outages. So it really is a surprisingly large problem. It's also a surprisingly complex problem to, to mm. get around. Yeah, and I like the fact that you mentioned the power thing because for it, like we're based in the UK, both of us, and yes, there is there is that mindset that in the UK, like these things are rare. We're not so prepared for it. It's not as common as if you're, you know, if some of our other listeners who are in India or across the different globes who power outages are there all the time. Uh, you know, th this is something that's happening a lot. So I like that you've kind of reminded us that this does happen in different parts of the country, and we, we're so reliant on internet and tech this these days and some of us are doing critical work so mm. i think that really does answer the you know why we need to consider this resilience now andrew what are the so what like what are the consequences if we don't consider this well uh, the obvious one's financial uh, mm -hmm. you're, you're not able to deliver what you're supposed to be delivering as a as an individual staff member and you know you already talked about traders you know if they're not available yeah. to, to trade at specific times um or execs uh you know they may be making decisions at critical times or just simply presenting yeah um we, you know, one of our customers uh, large media company which you wouldn't ordinarily ex mm -hmm. sort of expect to be needing resilience but their senior execs are presenting to the senior execs of you know, some of the world's largest brands for hundreds of millions of pounds of advertising and it takes ages for these people to get their, their, these meetings organised. Mm -hmm. You just happen not to be able to attend it because you've had a power outage or your internet's down that morning. Mm. Um, then yeah, that has a massive impact, not just financially because you know possibly you're going to lose the deal, but it's it's not great from a brand impact uh, perspective. We have others uh, that are looking at this much more from a regulation perspective. I.e., there are key individuals that need to. Uh, undertake specific activities, mm -hmm. whatever the scenario. Um, and I'm talking obviously financial services here. Yeah. Um, and if those individuals can't undertake those activities just because they've got a power outage or internet outage that morning or that afternoon, that's just not good enough because you know these organisations are committing um, to the FCA and the Bank of England yeah. um, uh, to be resilient, and and you know they're, they're doing that because they're either part of the financial markets infrastructure or they're delivering services to their customers, um, which we rely on. Yeah, and I, I like that last point that you've made, and it's going to be pertinent to a lot of the resilience professionals tuning in about, you know, the, the operational resilience requirements, mm. especially for financial services and, and beyond, actually, because, you know, supply chain um, and the impacts of that. So having the excuse that, oh, we had a power outage isn't going to be good enough. And, mm. and that's a good, that's a huge consequence, obviously, with the, the reputational and finance impacts, too. That's also mm. important, but it's really I'm glad you picked up on that point because 
we need that reminder because sometimes we forget and we kind of start thinking in silos don't we about mm. like it's not really relevant because we're not in that kind of country environment and, and stuff mm. like that so it is important guys if you're listening or tuning in and the consequences are huge so so far uh you know andrew's talked talked us through what is remote working resilience like why do we need to consider it the consequences you know are quite heavy in in that sense and it's not an excuse to not anymore it's not good enough to say i did i didn't know um there, so the, and, and you know I'm going to ask you this now. So we've got a, we've got the whys, the what's, and stuff, and uh, people are going to be wondering. Well, is there a solution to this? What's going to mm. help make my life so much easier? And I think Andrew, and I know Andrew has something. So Andrew, what is the solution? Is there a solution? Well, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, you know, seriously, it, it is actually a surprisingly complex uh, okay. problem to solve because. Yeah. So, uh, if you're an enterprise and you're trying to build resilience into individuals' homes, yeah, um, you could of course send out a UPS and a 4G fan of a router and a load of cables. Um, and these are consumer devices, and you can send them out to your staff members, and they just cobble them all together. Mm -hmm. so the problem with that, of course, is that all these, although these people are critical to your organisation, they're not necessarily technical. Mm. And once those devices have gone out the door, you don't really know what's going on with them because they're consumer devices. You can't log into them remotely and see what's happening. Um, and it, you know, one of the actually the top three um, problems uh, that uh, home workers or, or organisations supporting home workers um, have is resilience, obviously. So that's mm -hmm. really connectivity and power issues but actually the support of remote workers. Mm. And so what we've tried to do uh, at Rescue is, is build a solution that has that resilience of, of power and comms. So it's always right. on power and comms, um, but also provide visibility for the remote IT teams mm. so that they can better support and, and faster diagnose, faster remediate problems mm -hmm. at these high value individuals' homes. And uh, so that's where Rescue comes in. Mm -hmm. um, it's all of those things in a very simple neat box um, so it's simple for the IT teams to send out the door it's very simple for the uh, remote workers to get out the box and plug it in the wall you connect it up to your uh, you know, your internet very much like a smart tv and uh, you know, that's it then they have remote resilience and it can then be remotely supported mm -hmm. you can see whether it's working and set up properly uh, if the remote users having some IT problems, you can drill into the infrastructure remotely. So it's a much better way of building proper enterprise grade mm -hmm. resilience and enterprise grade infrastructure into your remote users' homes without the need for you know lots of devices, lots of site visits. You know, it, it's complicated, and this makes it very elegant and simple solution. I like that because you're right having sending lots of cables and stuff to some critical workers house is a complicated b do they have space because not everyone has the luxury of space um all those cables I, I would have no idea what to do with all of those <laughs> as mm. well and then trying to get someone a user to then troubleshoots is just a, a, a hassle so I like the idea that you know there's this like device and you plug in the rescue uh, mm. nifty little attractive thing I've seen it guys and it's quite good you'll you see a picture um, you know it looks quite aesthetically pleasing obviously that's not the like the main purpose <laughs> purpose of that but it's easy to implement and I like the fact that you said you know like the IT teams can then access it remotely and fix all that while mm. you're doing well I'm getting on doing my job uh, which is quite interesting now some might argue that well okay well what about this and, and we were talking about this before uh you know like when this kind of stuff happened before the pandemic you would just go over to a recovery site and that would be dealt mm. with there right and so i want to kind of just take a few kind of steps back in time about talking about like how you came up with this idea. Now you kind of alluded to it earlier, like there's a big need for it, obviously, because there's stuff going on, but mm. you didn't start off with rescue. You started off doing work area recovery. So tell us a little bit That's about right. how that evolved and why you saw the need for that. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, as you say, you rescue 
came out of uh, an, an idea from Fortress and Fortress Availability Services uh, is still uh, offering work area recovery. It's focusing very much on dedicated now yeah. um, because the market's changed. But you know, previously we were you know, winning awards and winning customers and uh, everything was going uh, very, very well. But of course, uh, as, we, as we said, you know, March 2020, we all went home. And, and I think most organizations now have come to the conclusion that, uh, you know, because we can all work productively at home, if there are issues in the office uh, for that huge majority of uh, workers, they can just go home and work from home. Mm. And so there's no need that now for this shared side of work area recovery. And so that market's pretty much disappeared. Yeah. Um, now, there is still a requirement, uh, particularly financial services and, and trading, so the dedicated trading floor, and you know, we, uh, we, we support uh, uh, some of the biggest financial services companies doing that. Yeah. But the rest of the business um, has pretty much evaporated. Mm. Uh, it's not, you know, there is no shared work area recovery anymore. Very, yeah. very, very few people are looking at that. And that, so that's why, you know, we needed to think very quickly about how we continue to deliver value to our customers and yeah. still be relevant in this new way of working. And you know, one of the things that always struck me when people were talking about work area recovery was, you know, how resilient is your recovery center because mm. they didn't have a disaster in the main office bring all their critical people across to the recovery center and then have another disaster yeah. um uh, and, and you know if you're building resilience into one office it's actually pretty straightforward you have dual feed power and dual feed comms a ups and generator and you've got a resilient building it's expensive mm. but it's pretty straightforward yeah um and, uh, and i say it, it's that move to all of those critical people doing that critical work uh, from the recovery center now doing it at home mm. that's where the complexity comes in because although having thousands of offices in effect um, has a benefit from resilience um, there are as, as i mentioned you know, those individuals not you know, the vast majority those individuals that uh, need that resilience rather than fallback now, of course when you're looking at resilience for your organizations these days and everyone's working from home you can map your employees locations and you can ensure that you can start distributing workloads. Mm. Um, you can bring people back into the office and, and, and et cetera. There are ways of ensuring that your staff members are resilient without having to build infrastructure into their homes. Mm. But for five to 10%, depending on what sort of market you're in and what sort of work you're doing, five to 10% um, need resilience in their homes yeah. as opposed to that fallback provision. Yeah, it's, it's almost like Rescube is the, uh, the little work area recovery for your home and it's like this exactly. big thing yeah. in a small package doing yeah. so much keeping us like those critical workers and and those services going and there is there's going to be some in your business that is happening so it, it's it's quite an innovative product and you know congratulations because you did win an uh, the cir award for this product too yeah, last maybe. year welcome and you know it just goes to show that Yes, you know, award. There's one thing about awards, but to bring out this new innovative product and and look at the gap in the market and think, okay, this could actually this product is useful worldwide. Uh, and the fact that we do need to consider this because the way we're working is changing is mm. is critical. Um, Andrew, and you've you know you've alluded to this product and this solution being quite easy. And, and that's the key thing, isn't it? And I want to reinforce this again to our listeners is, you know, you procuring anything in a business, <laughs> whether it's a business continuity tool or, you know, a, a platform for comms, it's just a lot of work. But Rescube, mm. it's quite easy. You know, you could just plug in and go, basically, and have the right stuff. So I, I really like that about that. Yeah, and, and you, you're right. You know, buying uh, any large um, cost or you know, spending any, any large amount of money is quite complex. So what we've done is actually turn Rescube into a service. So okay. rescue as a service. So you, there's no upfront cost. You simply uh, pay a monthly subscription, uh, and that provides the uh, the hardware, obviously, but also the solution wraparound, because uh, obviously enterprises need some account management, technical support, and you know, help with setup and things like that. Um, but all of that's delivered actually as a monthly subscription. So it's actually very straightforward mm. for organisations just to sign up for you know five rescues, twenty rescues, you know, yeah. just to have a monthly subscription. Um, oh, yeah. 
And the other the other point I'd make actually is it, you mentioned worldwide. Um, obviously, you know, we we started here in the UK, but actually, you know, through our partners, we have some large um, <clears throat> partners, at Computer Center and um, Kindrel, which was the previous sort of IBM Global Services, mm -hmm. um, providing uh, rescued as part of their overall services for desktop and end user computing um, and, uh, and also for, for resilience as well. And, but those are global. And we also have partners in Germany, there's a company called Centricom. Um, and we're talking with partners in South Africa currently. Um, and also in India, there's got a lot of interest in, uh, coming out of in, India. Um, yeah, of uh, course. And, uh, uh, and also for the US as well. So it, uh, as you point out, this has applicability globally um and uh, you, the 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 actual device and the solution and the service um is also applicable globally as well I love that. And I'm really glad you mentioned that as, uh, you know, that you can, you don't have to buy these cubes outright, you can use it as a service. So you can use it for a short term solution and trial it and see, because mm -hmm. that's really important too, because, you know, investing in stuff like this, it's not just, you don't just, you know, write the check tomorrow, you know, you got to think mm -hmm. about it. So I like that you're offering it as a service. And then obviously, you can buy it too. And I feel that, because this is the the way working is going and our lives are you know becoming more hybrid that more and more people are probably going to buy it for themselves once they get mm. familiar with it because yeah. it's really annoying when the internet goes down personally um, yeah. especially if you're streaming things so from a personal resilience point of view especially if you mm. you know you've got a big family and like everyone's devices are connected all the time you know it's not just business but you can actually use it for personal resilience too um, um, to, sure. to help you keep doing whatever is important uh, for you, whether that's watching movies or gaming or whatever. So yeah. there's that uh, that element of it too, which we don't yeah, really yeah. tend to look at. So yeah, thank you, Andrew. It, we've, it's been quite insightful. You know, we've it is safe to say that remote working and resilience is here to stay. It's essential that we look at the we be proactive in this whole resilience sphere instead of being reactive. Yes, we can be reactive because we can get by your cubes but you know the whole point is to prevent it happening in the first place and the, these the res cube will help with that so thank mm -hmm. you for joining us before we close off finally any um do you have any final words for our audience like where can they find out a little bit more if they you know we've piqued their interest in this product yeah, yeah well um I, I guess you know final thoughts you, we, we talked about the reasoning behind uh, resilience for, for home workers and also for rescue. Um, and one of the things, uh, actually, uh, particularly with financial services, mm -hmm. is, uh, is is proof uh, and reporting. Um, yeah. Often these days, and of course, as part of, part of operational resilience, um, operational resilience professionals uh, have to prove. You know, they need to test yes. that uh, these provisions for resilience work. In the old days, of course, you used to take all your staff to a recovery center and and and, and prove that yeah. actually it works and you know, all systems worked and people were able to continue their work. Um, but it's much more complex these days. That's where again rescue can help because it, it provides reporting um, and management. So you can actually print out a report that says, right, you know, these Done. guys are are, uh, are resilient. As far as uh, you know, hopefully you know, it's been some interest to, to people uh, listening in and, and, and watching. Uh, the uh, uh, our conversation you can see basically um, more at www.rescue.com and that's uh, r-e-s-k-u-b-e.com fabulous thank you guys so if you've tuned in today and you're curious about what is rescue especially if you've been listening and you haven't seen some of the images pop up or well, you know what we're talking about then get online to andrew's site and, and have a look at this product you know you, we're all working on resilience most of us who are listening anyway if this is coming up as a key thing for you uh keep you know consideration then you, you need to have a look because you know people are going to ask you are you prepared i'm asking you are you prepared for remote working resilience so we will leave it at that thank you once again andrew for joining us on the, the resilience pod and sharing this amazing innovative project with us um 
guys thank you once again for tuning in um if you liked this episode or you're curious then please like comment share far and wide and get in touch with me and andrew if you've got any questions this is me your host with our guest andrew signing out and until next time keep on investing in your resilience